Hello and welcome everyone to the 6th edition of our workshop on benchmarking multi-target tracking. This year our focus is on segmenting and tracking every point and pixel. We are happy to present this workshop in conjunction with ICCV. Before we dive into the workshop itself, let me introduce our team. My name is Mark and together with Ayosha we will host this workshop today. Yet, without the support of all the amazing people you can see on this slide, we wouldn't be able to have this workshop. This year's edition of the BMTT workshop will be all about scene understanding. To enable mobile robots in real-world settings, we need to teach them how to navigate and move around the world. The objective is to navigate into the free space area and not collide with other agents or structures. For that, robots will need to track possibly dynamic objects over time. This task is usually benchmarked in a multi-object tracking setting with annotations such as shown here. In addition to that, robots will also need to be aware of the static scene geometry. Even more so, recognize the semantic meaning of such structures. For example, we need to know where the drivable area is. We therefore believe that segmenting and tracking every point and pixel is important for understanding the scenes we all perceive every day. For video, this task is called video panoptic segmentation and for LIDAR it is called 4D panoptic LIDAR segmentation. You can see example annotations on this slide. We will now give you a brief overview about how the recognition tasks have evolved for both the robotic as well as for the vision community. So let's go back in time to 1986 when a team of researchers from CMU took robots from indoor lab environments into outdoor environments. If we look at the paper describing the perception modules of NAVLAB1, researchers back then didn't really trust stereo vision, not to mention monocular perception. So they equipped the vehicle with an early version of a LiDAR scanner that is quite heavy, had a low frame rate and a short distance compared to our standards now, and developed uh, perception systems to map terrain and to localize. This can be seen as a simple version of road segmentation and static obstacle detection. Then 20 years later, we have seen a huge success in the DARPA challenges. In 2005, robots had to navigate a 142 mile long course through the desert. The perception system was again heavily relying on the LiDAR sensor. The main focus was again on the vehicle localization as well as the terrain classification, a kind of predecessor of semantic segmentation. To successfully complete this challenge, one really had to understand where the obstacles were and where the drivable area was. As with NAFLAB1, robots were being tested in a static environment. This setting has changed in 2007. That year's challenge was about a 60 mile course in an urban area, which was occupied by other competing robots as well as human drivers. To quote the report, one of the most significant challenges from the previous competition is that for urban driving. Robots need to have situational awareness of both static and dynamic parts of the environment. In more recent years, we have seen a stronger focus on segmentation tasks. That includes semantic segmentation, instant segmentation, as well as the combination of both, which is panoptic segmentation. At the same time, Research in the field of tracking advanced as well and we have seen a lot of work tackling the tracking of multiple objects in 3D. Most recently the task of 4D panoptic LiDAR segmentation was introduced that requires the segmentation and tracking of every point. This task has also been part of our challenges this year. When shifting our focus from the robotics community to the vision community, we can also observe quite an evolution of visual perception tasks. Traditionally, the community working on tracking 
and the community working on recognition tasks were somewhat disjoint. In tracking, early tasks were about tracking a single object throughout a series of images, while in the recognition community the focus was on tasks such as object detection and semantic segmentation. In object detection, multiple objects had to be localized with a bounding box, while in semantic segmentation every pixel is assigned a label from a fixed set of classes. With progress made on all these tasks, it was natural to increase the level of difficulty. In tracking, the most popular task became multi-object tracking, in which a set of objects has to be tracked. These objects are either provided by a benchmark or are needed to be detected as well. In the recognition community, the task of object detection evolved into the task of instance segmentation, in which every object also needs to be segmented. A couple of years ago, all these previous recognition tasks were combined to form the panoptic segmentation task, in which every pixel needs to have a semantic label and an instance ID. The last edition of this workshop has already blurred the lines of tracking and recognition. In more difficult task settings, methods need to tackle both tracking and recognition. In the previous BMTT workshop, the task was multi-object tracking and segmentation, which is a combination of instant segmentation and multi-object tracking. Objects have to be localized, segmented and tracked throughout the video. While this task was a big step into a unified perception task, the semantic understanding of static geometry is still missing in this setting, yet of great importance, as discussed before. In this year, we hope to provide a unified perception task that has evolved from all the previous tracking and recognition tasks by requiring a semantic label and track ID per pixel or point. And with that, we can now focus on this year's workshop. To manifest this research direction, we have created several challenges around benchmarks that were introduced this year. So, let's have a closer look at this year's challenges for holistic video or lighter scene understanding. Such holistic scene understanding can come in many flavors, and it is unclear at this point if one of them is superior over the others. Given the experience of the robotics community, we see the need to further advance the research of segmenting and tracking every point. For that we provide segmentation and tracking annotations for multiple LiDAR sequences. At the same time, humans are capable of reasoning about the semantic meaning of their surroundings and following dynamic objects just based on monocular or stereo vision. Therefore, we also provide annotations to measure the segmentation and tracking of every pixel. As a third track, we aim to investigate whether the big advantage of LiDAR point clouds, which is having 3D data, can be reached by going directly from video to depth plus corresponding video panoptic segmentation. During this workshop, we have a variety of speakers that work with one or multiple of these data modalities, as well as the winners of these challenges. Given these new annotations, our goal is to benchmark all three flavors of this task in a unified way. We argue even though the data modalities are quite different, and traditionally the communities working on these different data modalities were different as well, the task is still the same. Hence we can ev evaluate the results in a unified way. For that we used the very recently proposed segmentation and tracking quality. In this workshop introduction we only want to give you a very high level idea of how we think this task should be evaluated. So here's a list of requirements we had for the metric. First of all, we want the metric to be non-negative and bounded, which has not always been the case for tracking metrics. Secondly, we think it's important that both segmentation and tracking are balanced and their errors are decoupled within the metric. We hope this gives insights in whether the segmentation or the association is leading to reduced scores. 
Thirdly, we would like to avoid non-intuitive thresholding to form sets of two positives, false positives and false negatives. Thresholding is a popular way in many segmentation or tracking metrics, but we argue that such thresholds as shown in the visual example here are not intuitive. While the human judgment is similar of the left and the right case here, many metrics will define one case as true positive and the other as false positive. In contrast, in the segmentation and tracking quality metric, every pixel or point counts towards the score without any threshold. Last but not least, we believe that some robustness against post-processing tricks is also very important. On a mathematical level, the segmentation and tracking quality consists of two factors. The association quality, AQ, as well as the segmentation quality, SQ. The overall score is defined as the geometric mean of the association and the segmentation quality. This requires all methods to perform reasonably well on both tasks to get a good overall score and penalizes methods neglecting one aspect of the task. Such a decoupling of performance measurement has been shown to work very well in the HOTA metric that by now has been adopted by most tracking benchmarks. For more details, please see the corresponding publications. For measuring segmentation, we can resort to the standard semantic segmentation metric, which is mean intersection over union. For this metric, the track or instance IDs are simply ignored and we consider every pixel of every sequence to compute the final score. The association quality is also measured on the pixel level. For that, only tracking IDs are considered leading to a class agnostic measure. Inspired by the HOTA metric, the SDQ metric makes sure to also take tracking precision and tracking recall into consideration, as both are important in real-world applications. On top of this, AQ is defined to encourage long-term track consistency. For an in-depth discussion on this metric, we refer again to the corresponding publication. After talking about the way we benchmark this task, Let's talk a bit about some of the challenges that we see for future work and that we hope will be addressed in your research. The task we address consists of multiple subtasks, which are detection, segmentation and tracking. So it's not surprising that we see the best results from methods that tackle this task by using different methods for different subtasks. Similar trends have been observed for image panoptic segmentation. However, from a research perspective, unified end-to-end -end models are much more interesting. So we hope to see more research tackling this task in an end-to-end -end way in the future. Another important research direction is how can we better deal with the limited labeled data? One question could be what are the best ways to leverage the huge amount of existing unlabeled data uh, in terms of video or LIDO? for this task. Orthogonal to this, one might ask, can we come up with methods that require significantly less data while still achieving state-of-the-art results? Again, we hope that these questions will be answered in future work. The third research direction we would like to see explored further is whether potential differences due to the data modalities can be addressed by future work. Could depth cues potentially improve segmentation and tracking performance? What is the overall right representation for this task? Will we need 3D data and therefore LiDAR sensors on mobile agents? Or can we also go directly from image space into a 3D world representation? And how can we reconcile the methodology proposed in the vision and robotics communities? We are very excited for all the future work to come that will try to answer these questions. So let's have a look at the workshop program today. We couldn't have this workshop without this list of amazing speakers. We invited speakers working on scene understanding and related fields, either with LIDAR or video. 
by mixing both academia and industry, we hope to give you a variety of different opinions on this topic. Besides invited speakers, we have the winners of this year's challenge presenting their approach at 10.35 and the roundtable discussion at 4.10. We are looking forward to see you all for the first talk in just a couple of minutes.